guys, time again for another pickup video. Uh, before we get started with the pickups, I've got quite a few this time around. I uh, made a really cool uh, pickup at a flea market yesterday. Got a uh, Sega Saturn system with a whole bunch of games, complete in the box, looked brand new. Guy threw in some extra games as well as part of the deal for the GameCube and also for the uh, Game Boy, but we'll get to that here in a minute. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank my buddy, Old School New York City Gamer, or Old School NYC Gamer. He donated a Coleco roller controller uh, to my show. Uh, it didn't work, but I told him I'd, I'd take it anyway. Uh, was able to fix it. Very simple fix. It was just a, a broken uh, circuit trace on the uh, circuit board. Uh, a lot of times with these vintage electronics, that's usually what I find wrong with them is a cold solder connection or a busted component, you know, something real simple that's easy to fix. Got it all working, and it's on its way now to uh, my buddy Ferg from the 2600 Game by Game podcast. Uh, I've been sending him Coleco stuff lately to build up his ColecoVision collection for uh, a podcast that we do together, um, Atari Visions. But anyway, uh, also, some pretty awesome news. Coleco is looking to bring back the little mini arcade games. Now, how awesome is this? Uh, they're asking, asking for the community's uh, input on this, about how to go about it, what people would like to see, all that kind of stuff. They've actually started a thread over an Atari age that they're monitoring to get people's feedback, ideas, and everything. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes down below. Let's see. Also, my mad scientist buddy Dwayne is at it again. He's been trying to come up with a standard little arcade cabinet to produce and we've been talking back and forth and I think the latest idea that we've come up with I think it's going to be the the standard cab he's going to start selling basically it's a modular design uh, you'll be able to change the orientation of the screen from horizontal to vertical it'll be held on by magnets pull the bezel off rotate it around put it back on again so you can play two for types of games also, there's going to be replaceable, interchangeable control panels as well. So we'll have a joystick control panel with the buttons. We'll have a rotary controller, like for Tempest, things like that. Uh, a trackball panel for like Mystical Band, Crystal Crassels, all that kind of stuff. And then a dual joystick uh, board uh, control panel for like two joystick games like Robotron, stuff like that. Uh, so that'll be also be held on by magnets as well into the front of the console, a little arcade cabinet. So right now he's building two. Uh, he's building me another one to take to shows and everything you know, with the Arcade USA graphics and stuff on it like that. And he's building one for himself. So looking forward to seeing how this turns out. All right, what else we got here? You know, it's bad when you can't read your own writing. Already talked about that. The fabulous Sega find. We can continue on with pickups. Now, got some cool stuff here. One of the things I picked up over the past uh, couple weeks or so, since the last time I did this, was a Coleco Amazatron. Awesome. This is actually a pretty neat little game. Uh, basically, it's a maze game. It generates random mazes. It'll tell you where to put the player's start position. You know, one or two, you know, player one, you know, right there, a little square there, and player two is another little square. And then as you play the game, you got to select a, a uh, panel and try to find your way through the hidden maze to get to the other player's piece. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm looking forward to making a video of this with my wife so uh, you guys can see how it works. But I'm pretty happy to get a hold of this. I picked this up off of eBay. I, I, I peruse eBay every once in a while to try to find stuff. And one of the things I like to do is I'll type in words like, you know, I'll spell Coleco with a K or, or stuff like that. Because sometimes people misspell what they list. And you can find stuff really cheap when you do that. So I'm pretty happy to get a hold of this. Let's see. Oh, from Milton Bradley, I picked up Electronic Light Fight. Never had one of these when they first came out. I remember seeing them on the shelves, saw commercials for them. Thought it was a really neat game. Basically, it's a two-player game only. And you use both hands when you play this game. 
and you have these lights in the middle that bounce around and stuff like that. You have different games you can play. Looking forward to actually getting into this and making some videos on it because I've never really played it before. It just looks really interesting. So that's awesome. Also, I picked up a little Coleco handheld. It's not too bad. It's kind of like... Uh, Kind of like games you would see on your your, your phone and stuff. It's kind of like cell phone type games. Very simplistic gameplay. Uh, there's like 10 games on here. It also has an output to go to your TV if you want to, but I don't have the cable for that. But all in all, it's kind of neat. I picked it up only because it was Coleco branded. I wanted to see what it was all about. Uh, they also make two other ones. They make one called Target. It has Target games on it. And they make another one called Racing that has racing games. So I'll keep my eye out for those two just so I get all three of them. I think they even made one called Casino as well, but I'm not 100% sure. i got to check into that. Turn everything back off. How you turn it off? There we go. And then I found another baseball by Mattel Electronics. Picked this up at my local trade-it store. It was 5 bucks. Uh, sound didn't work. Everybody's it works fine. So I took it apart and I found that one of the leads had popped off of the little piezo, little piezo speaker in there. So I soldered it back together and now it's got sound. Awesome. Already got one of these, so this will most likely end up in a uh, another junk box that I'll mail around. So this will be a nice thing, nice thing to put into that. All right. Oh, picked up one of these as well. This past couple of weeks, it's the Sound Logic XT miniature arcade cabinet. Now, the whole reason why I picked this up is because these little mini arcades kind of fascinate me. You probably saw I did a review on the uh, Dream Gear one that was kind of like, eh, it's okay. This one has a little bit better selection of games, I believe. I remember seeing a video that has Galaga on here. I think it's the NES version of Galaga, but I'm going to find out when I fire this thing up and do a review video on it. So that's going to be coming real soon. For my Super Nintendo collection, I picked up Choplifter 3. Now, I love the Choplifter games. Yeah. I managed to play that game on my Atari 8-bit quite a bit. Uh, a fun game. This is actually a pretty nice version of it. Uh, with updated graphics and everything. It's a little hard to play. Of course, I can't play games with a darn anyway. But that's pretty nice. I picked this up uh, at a game store at Stearman. They were having a two-for-one sale. So I picked up three Super Nintendo games. This is one of the ones I definitely wanted. So I knew this is one. So this next one here I picked up was Time Slip for the Super Nintendo. This is actually a kind of neat game. Uh, you, r you run through these different levels. You can pick up power-ups to your weapons and everything. Uh, it's a little bit hard to describe, but it, it's a really good game. This is the other one I wanted. Uh, so I'm pretty happy to add that to the collection. And then for my free game, I just went ahead and picked up a game called Hyperzone. This game's kind of interesting. It's uh, got that 3D-looking thing as you fly down this corridor. Kind of reminds me how F-Zero looks a little bit. Uh, very colorful game. Uh, it's actually not too bad. I was a little pleasantly surprised considering it's one of those HAL games. Yeah, HAL. It's okay. I don't know if I'll keep it or not, but it was kind of interesting. Then I picked up Kid Nicky for the Nintendo Entertainment System. I can't play this game worth a darn. As you've seen in the gameplay up here, I'm not doing too good on this game. It's an arcade game that's been ported over to the, to the Nintendo. I've never seen this in the arcade, and it's pretty hard for me to play, so I doubt very much I'm going to keep this in my collection. I only picked it up because it said, Arcade Hit, right there. This may go into a box. Next junk box, too. Hmm. Now to the Sega Genesis pickup I did. Yesterday I went to a flea market that's not too far from me. 
It's out in the middle of nowhere. And I picked up a Sega Genesis console with a bunch of games and some other games thrown in for like $75. So here's the Sega Genesis console. Right there. When I went to the controller. Guy said it didn't work, wouldn't power up, all that good stuff. I was like, okay, well, I'm pretty good at fixing these little boogers. So I brought it home and went to hook it up. And just for the heck of it, I want to check the output of the power supply here. And I noticed it was putting out 9 volts AC. So I looked at the back of it. Yep, 9 volts AC. Uh, Sega Genesis likes uh, DC current. So I went and got my Genesis power supply, plugged it in. Boom, it works. Awesome. Got thrown in the deal for free. So that's pretty cool. And then this, the games that came with it. All these are complete in box. In pretty good condition as well. We got a World of Illusion with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. It's pretty neat. Not a bad little platforming type game. Uh, it's okay. I'm not going to keep this one. But it's, it's actually not too bad of a game if you like the, the Disney kind of stuff. Now here's one that was pretty cool. It's called Two Crew, Two Crew Dudes. This game is awesome. You can pick up things in the environment and throw them at your enemies. You can pick them up and throw them around, beat them up. Uh, this is actually a pretty cool game. I'm really enjoying this. Never heard of it. Uh, so I'm pretty happy to get a hold of this. Then, of course, I picked up another copy of Sunset Riders. I've already got this, so now i got another copy of it. It's complete in the box. has the manual and everything. Looks in pretty good shape. So that's kind of cool. Can't play the game worth a darn, though, but it's still a pretty neat game. Now I picked up Gauntlet 4. That was part of that, that package. Love Gauntlet. My wife and I used to play Gauntlet when we were dating. Played it for hours. And I remember when this came out on the Sega Genesis, we picked it up immediately when we saw it. And proceeded to play it for hours and hours. It's actually a really good version of Gauntlet on the Sega Genesis. So Pretty happy to get a hold of this. Also in that little uh, pickup, there was a not for resale Sonic the Hedgehog. We all know who Sonic the Hedgehog is. I uh, just wanted to show that it came with it. Another one that I've not heard of that came with it, Green Dog. Now, it's interesting. It's not too bad of a game. It's not my cup of tea, but... I don't know if I'm going to keep this one or not. It's kind of cool, but I don't know. And of course, Tasmania. Everybody's got to love the Tasmanian Devil. Can't play this game with a darn either. <laughs> but it's nice to have in the collection. And then we have Chuck Rock. That's a pretty interesting game. I like how he uses the belly bump. To defeat his enemies and stuff. That really cracks me up. Again, not really into this game. So I probably won't be keeping it in my collection. And we have a Mortal Kombat. Just like the name says, Mortal Kombat. Like the arcade game. Has the sound effects, uh, speech and everything like that. I'm not into um, the Mortal Kombat series. But this will end up in the next jump box as well. Then got a hold of X-Men for the Sega Genesis. Didn't come with a poster though, but everything else is here. It's a pretty interesting game. It's not too bad. I think the Genesis Gems covered this not too long ago. and uh, Not my type of game. Uh, but it's okay. Then we have Echo the Dolphin. My wife loves the Echo the Dolphin games. So I think I've already got this in my collection. I got to double check. But it's not too bad a game. It's actually kind of cool. So if I don't have this in my collection, this one's going to stay. And then, of course, we have Shining Force. A little RPG action on the uh, Sega Genesis. 
RPGs is not really what I'm into very much. Uh, I may have to give this game a little bit more of a try. I played it just briefly, as you can see in the gameplay up here. But it's just... Mm, I just don't like running around talking to a lot of people. I just don't go out and chop up things or shoot them. Mm. Like them action games, yeah. Uh. Also, thrown in with all these games, I got a bunch of boxed Game Boy Advance games. First one is called Stadium Games. So basically you have like, you know, Long Jump, you have Javelin, you have Skeet Shoot, stuff like that in here. It's not too bad. Uh, the games such as Skeet Shooting, you actually need an analog controller to move crosshairs around. It's really hard to do with the D-pad with any type of accuracy. So that game kind of suffers a little bit on here. But uh, the Javelin Throw is kind of fun. It's not too bad. And Blades of Thunder. Neat little hel helicopter combat sim. This one actually is not too bad. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Blue Lightning a little bit on the Atari, on the Atari Lynx. Pretty fun game. I'll probably keep a hold of this one because I like these type of games. Then we have Terminator 3, The Rise of the Machines. Not too bad of a game. It's an uh, exploration type game. It's kind of cool. Uh, it's got some neat weapons in there. and It kind of has the... 3D isometric view as you're looking down from above and at an angle. Not too bad. A little hard to control, uh, but not a bad game overall. Then we have some classic games. Connect 4, Perfection, and Trouble. Love that little trouble game. Little pop ball. That was a cool game when I was a kid. It's pretty well represented in, on this cartridge as well. Perfection, Perfection makes me nuts. And of course, Connect 4, that's an old time classic. I love Connect 4. So, this overall is a pretty neat little cartridge to get a hold of. I think they put some other ones out that had board games on there as well. I think they got one that's got life on it, I think. Some other ones. So, this is kind of cool. I'll probably give this one to my wife because she likes these type of games. Then I got a hold of a pretty cool game Star Wars Flight of the Falcon. This is actually kind of neat. It's you sit behind some of the levels. You sit behind the Falcon in the level I'm playing here, and you're shooting Tie Fighters and things like it. You fly by a Star Destroyer. Really awesome graphics on the uh, Game Boy Advance. It, they did a really good job with this game. It has multiple levels you can play that do different things. You know, uh, it's actually a pretty cool, pretty cool cartridge. I, I've already got this one. So this one I'll probably go and pop into a, a jump box eventually. Highly recommend this game if you like Star Wars games. Now all the games that you see me playing back here, I'm doing it on the GameCube with that little thing that plugs into the bottom you put the cartridges in. Uh, I'm going to start doing that when I pick up Game Boy Advance games because I hate trying to focus on that Game Boy screen. It makes all kinds of funny lines and stuff like that. Next up we have some arcade classics. Millipede, Lunar Lander, and Super Breakout. Now again, you need to have a paddle controller to play games like Breakout. The D-pad is, is not very good for these type of games. Uh, works really well with Lunar Lander though. Uh, I like how they did Lunar Lander on this. It's actually quite a bit of fun to play. You use the shoulder buttons to increase and decrease your thrust. You hit the B button to do like a emergency thrust and then you hit the A button to do the abort to get you out of trouble. Did a pretty good job translating Lunar Lantern to the little Game Boy Advance uh, considering we didn't have that that throttle like the arcade game did, the variable throttle, but they represented it with the shoulder buttons very well. And then also we got a hold of Tournament, tournament Paintball. I don't like this game at all. <laughs> That game's got to go. Now, I'm a big fan of the Ace Combat game, so we have Ace Combat Advance. Uh, what's different about this game is a top-down view. 
and you can go down to the ground, you can come back up in the air, you got your missiles and your machine guns, you fly around just like an ace combat, except you're looking at the play field from top down. You're not in the cockpit flying around like you do on the, the PlayStation and stuff like that. It's actually not too bad of a game. It's it's a lot of bit it's quite a bit of fun. So I'm pretty happy to get a hold of that. And we also got a hold of in that little Sega Genesis uh pickup. He threw in a copy of Mario Kart Double Dash. Awesome. I didn't have this in my collection, and I love the Mario Kart games. Uh, this one is not too bad, actually. I kind of enjoy it. Uh, I really love Mario Kart on the N64. It's one of my favorite games. And this one, I would say, places a pretty close second. So, pretty awesome. So, that's pretty much it whole lot of pickups this time around so anyway uh thanks for watching <laughs>